There's a war raging in cotton fields across the South. The rival factions are farmers against insect pests. Every year in Texas alone, boll weevils, aphids, and boll worms gobble up an average of 600,000 bales of cotton. That's over 150 million pair of jeans. Fortunately, farmers have a number of allies who instinctively know the enemy and his battle theater. These native guerrilla fighters are the naturally occurring beneficial insects, spiders, and diseases found in any cotton field. Recognizing and using these important allies is an important management tactic for the wise farmer. Come with us as we push toward the front lines of this ongoing struggle. We'll introduce you to many of the good bugs or natural enemies that call cotton fields home. You will learn to take full advantage of these natural enemies and their ability to combat insect pests. Starting in the 40s, producers used insecticides in the old shotgun approach of weekly applications. This wholesale slaughter led to high costs, environmental contamination, and insecticide-resistant bugs. By the 70s, farmers realized they were losing the battle and shifted to an integrated pest management, or IPM approach, of use without abuse. Until the IPM revolution, the only good bug was a dead bug. IPM encourages an environmentally sound strategy incorporating cultural controls selective insecticides, and the use of natural enemies to control pests. Why the increased interest in biological control in cotton? First, where the boll weevil has been eradicated, fewer insecticide treatments are now necessary. Natural enemies thrive in a reduced insecticide environment and play a greater role in controlling other cotton pests. Second, the effectiveness of natural enemies in controlling beet army worms, aphids and boll worms, and bud worms has become apparent. Also, predators can help control boll worms and bud worms, which survive on BT cotton, helping these varieties perform even better. Finally, new insecticides are available that are easier on natural enemies. This boon lets growers protect natural enemies and take full advantage of biological control of other pests. Now, let's follow a furrow and meet some of the more noted natural pest fighters. Put on your glasses or reach for a magnifying glass because you'll need them to see these soldiers. The first group we'll meet is the predators. They're the snipers of the insect world. Like guerrilla fighters, predators hunt their prey. Some simply run their quarry down, while others, like spiders, sit and wait in ambush. Spiders love to dine on all kinds of plant bugs and caterpillars. Some even snack on bollworm eggs. Many spiders call the cotton crop home, but most of the cotton crowd do not build webs. The lynx spider is the classic predator. Like its namesake, this guy has long, thin legs armed with long spines that let him aggressively chase down prey. Crab spiders are just the opposite. They hide and wait to ambush hapless insects. These spiders look like crabs with their long, curved front legs. They even crawl backwards or sideways like the ocean variety. Jumping spiders combine the two tactics. They stalk, then suddenly attack. They have stout and hairy bodies and are sometimes a metallic green or purple color. Lady beetles are another common predator class. They prefer aphids, but will also dine on other small, soft-bodied insects. The convergent lady beetle, so-called because of the two white converging lines behind the head, is common in cotton. The immature stage, or larva, of the lady beetle devours aphids like a kid eating popcorn at the movies. The larva looks like a black alligator with orange spots. The seven-spotted lady beetle, the pink-spotted lady beetle, and the harmonia lady beetle are also found in cotton. Like the convergent lady beetle, all devour aphids. The skimness lady beetle is much smaller than the convergent variety and lacks spots. Like her larger cousins, she loves aphids, mites, and other small insects. The skimness larva has long, white, waxy filaments on their body, and that makes them look like a tuft of cotton. They are usually found happily munching their way through the nearest aphid colony. 
two look-alike predators are the minute pirate bug and the insidious flower bug. For convenience, both are often called aureus. As adults, these bugs are black with a white X pattern on the back and generally hang out in the cotton blooms. Their sharp beak lets them stab their prey and suck out all the juices, soda straw fashion. Immature aureus are shaped like the adult bugs and are yellow-orange when first hatched. They later turn tan to dark brown. They often hide in the terminal buds of cotton plants. Pirate bugs and insidious flower bugs eat thrips, small bullworms, budworms, and other small soft-bodied insects. They also eat beet armyworm eggs, small caterpillars, and cotton pollen. The big-eyed bug, so-called because of its large, bulging eyes, is another predator ally you'll likely find in the cotton battle zone. It has long, sharp mouth parts used to stab and suck prey dry. Adults are gray to black. The immature or nymph of the big-eyed bug looks like an adult without wings. Nymphs and adults eat all sorts of insect critters. They prefer dinner to be small and soft-bodied. Predator troops you'll be less likely to see are damsel bugs and assassin bugs. Like pirate bugs and big-eyed bugs, they have long, sharp mouth parts. The adult green lacewing is a delicate, slender insect about one-half to three-quarters of an inch long. They are green with long antenna and golden eyes. The large, delicate wings are laced with a network of veins. Adults of some species eat insects, while other species feed only on nectar and pollen. Lacewing eggs are deposited at the top of a long, slender thread attached to a leaf or stem. The lacewing larva is shaped like an alligator. Its long, sickle-shaped mouthparts are used to stab its insect prey and suck out its juices. Lacewing larvae feed on aphids, insect eggs, mites, and small caterpillars.